building Java using Maven on Jenkins. It starts with a need. I want to build Java. But when you make that statement, it inevitably leads to a question. How do I go about building Java? Asking that question is going to have you confront it with a number of tools and technology and terms. Everything from Team City to DevOps and CI and CD. But what does all this mean? And what do I need and what do I not need? At the end of the day, it starts with a developer working locally on a code base. They want to somehow take that code base and get it into a production environment. Let's start by demystifying some of these common terms. CI, CD, also CD and DevOps. How do they fit together? We'll start with continuous integration. Shown here is the Martin Fowler Continuous Integration Certification Test. It asks three questions to determine whether you're doing CI or not, starting with that every developer is committing at least daily to a shared mainline. That means that everyone is working in the same part of source control at the same time and integrating daily. On every one of those changes, known as a commit, it triggers an automated build and test that will verify the work that has been happening. And in the event something goes wrong, and it will, it's fixed quickly. This is about team ownership, from checking in code to then having to deal with any problems with it. Beyond that, we have continuous delivery, which then takes that same level of automation and applies it to the deployment process. Instead of waiting on a series of human beings to follow instructions for delivering stuff, you're going to have automation that runs as a part of your process that's going to handle the delivery for you. There is going to be a manual step, though, or at least a point of human intervention where someone's going to have to step in and say, yes, this is good to go to production. That's generally known as a CAB, a change advisory board. It's some sort of manual approval. Beyond that, though, we have continuous deployment. And that's where that code change gets automatically built, tested, and deployed from environment to environment automatically with no stops in the middle of it. This requires, obviously, high maturity CI and CD. Otherwise, you would just be breaking production more quickly. This may seem scary, but consider that this is how major players like Netflix are delivering value very quickly by deploying to production up to 100 times per day. Covering all of this is DevOps. We hear DevOps a lot, but please consider that DevOps isn't a tool, and it's definitely not a silver bullet. DevOps at the end of the day is about ownership. It's that the team doing the work, writing the code, is actually responsible for taking that code and getting it into production. And once in production, that team is then responsible for maintaining it. That means that the team owns the software from end to end. There's nobody but the team accountable for that software. The advantage of this is it directly incentivizes the team to do high quality work because after all, if the system goes down, they're the ones getting the phone call at three o'clock in the morning. Making sense out of all the tools and technologies though, requires building what I like to refer to as a CI and CD pyramid. At the bottom layer, you have your infrastructure or runtime environment. This is the operating system essentially on which you're going to be running all of your stuff. Specifically, you have your CI platform. This is the tool responsible for essentially hosting your pipelines and kind of orchestrating everything. The CI platform itself is going to have to work directly with your source control system, the place where your code lives. In order to take that source code and turn it into some type of binary or deliverable, though, you're going to have to use a build system. Ultimately, all responsible with inside the language you're using. This course picks a path through that pyramid, starting at the very bottom level with Docker. We're going to use containerization to actually run the Jenkins, the CI platform environment. This allows you to experiment it in a way that's not going to affect your computer or any other environment. Above that, we're going to be using Git via github.com, which will go over how to do things like set up authentication between Jenkins and Git. Then for our build technology, we're going to be using Apache Maven to take that Java code, test it, verify it, and then turn it into a jar file and publish it. All covering what you would need to do in terms of the typical life cycle of a Java application or library. How? With lots of working examples. Every aspect of this course comes with a set of instructions, examples, and working software for how to make all this stuff function. 
Every repository will additionally come with its own presentation covering some of the basics and then actually get into walking step by step how to do this work. The first section of this course gets into what we call infrastructure. It's specifically going to start with using Git via github.com. It's going to have you set up the appropriate SSH keys to be able to integrate with Git without having to rely on a username or password, which also isn't supported for a lot of Git technologies anymore. The next step is then to set up Docker and Docker Compose. These are the containerization technologies you're going to use to host Jenkins inside of its own container, so you can spin it up and spin it down as needed. Finally, we're going to get into running Jenkins locally. This is a good way to experiment with Jenkins in a way that's not going to affect some existing implementation. You'll be able to install plugins, uninstall plugins, reset things, go back to different states, all without having to worry about affecting anybody else. The next section gets into building Java itself, starting with the very basics of Java build theory. How do we go from Java files and turn them into a jar file? Then we're going to start introducing Maven and its concepts from its way of doing life cycles and goals and phases, ultimately to dealing with things like code coverage integration and code coverage metrics, and then get into common tools like PMD for static code analysis. And eventually, we're going to take that well-tested and high-quality jar file, and we're going to publish it as a library to a Maven repository. And the final section, we're going to automate all of this via Jenkins. We're going to start with the basic Jenkins freestyle job, a way of driving a graphical user interface to establish a job for taking a change in source control, running our test and automation on it, and actually publishing it as a Maven repository. Then we're going to introduce the idea of pipelines as code. Instead of having to spend 10 minutes configuring a graphical user interface, we're going to write a pipeline script that instead, using just code, is going to do all that same work for us. And then finally, we're going to introduce the declarative pipeline. This is the recommended form of pipeline because it works across all branches in terms of source control. It's also the least verbose. It's a very easy way to have your pipeline live with your code base.